In this e-learning video, you will learn how to install and initialize a new IBM Storewise V5000 system into an IBM rack. Before you begin installation, check your parts inventory. This product consists of a control enclosure, a rack mounting hardware kit, PDU power cables, and a publications package with a USB flash drive. Optional features include drives, fiber channel or SAS cables, and country-specific power cables. Expansion enclosure options also include country-specific power cables, along with expansion enclosure attachment cables and drives. You will also need a flathead screwdriver and a Phillips screwdriver. Note that each enclosure can weigh between 30 and 70 pounds, depending on the amount of drives that are installed. For this reason, you will need at least two people to install the enclosures into the rack. Let's begin. Each rail comes with a set of support springs and mounting screws. Alternative mounting pins are also included for non-IBM racks, so swap them out if necessary. Begin installation by attaching the support rail springs. Attach the circle end of the spring around the stud on the rail. Then, attach the hook end of the spring to the tab on the rail by pulling on the spring. Note that each rail comes with a label that describes the side and direction for its installation. You are now ready to install the support rails in the rack cabinet. To install the rails, open the hinge bracket on each end of a rail. It is recommended that you secure the rails in the cabinet with pins as an extra precaution. Make sure that the rail is level and align the pins on the rails with the holes in the rack. Make sure that the rails are aligned on the inside of the rack cabinet before pressing the two bracket pins into the holes of the rack. Repeat this process on the front of the rail. When you are finished, close the rear and front hinge brackets to secure the rack to the rack cabinet. Secure the rear of the rail to the rear rack with one M5 screw in the bottom of the bracket. Repeat this procedure to secure the opposite rail to the rack cabinet. Here's a tip. If you are only installing a control enclosure, position the enclosure in the rack so that you can easily view it and access it for servicing. This helps with rack stability and serviceability. After the support rails are installed, you are ready to install the control enclosure. Begin by sliding the enclosure into the rack cabinet until the enclosure is almost completely inserted. On either side of the drive assemblies, remove the enclosure end caps by grasping the handle and pulling the bottom of the bezel end cap free, then clearing the tab on the top of the enclosure. Remember that the rails are not designed to hold an enclosure that is partially inserted. Push the enclosure completely in, place the retaining screw on each side of the enclosure and then replace the left and right end caps by hooking them onto the top of the enclosure and pivoting down. If you need to install one or more expansion enclosures, repeat the steps to install additional support rails in the rack cabinet and install the expansion enclosures in the rack. Note that a control enclosure can support up to six expansion enclosures, but in this video, we will only install one. Here's another tip. If you are installing a control enclosure and expansion enclosures, install the control enclosure in the middle of the rack and stack the expansion enclosures directly above and below the control enclosure. Avoid adding other equipment between the enclosures. This helps with rack stability and serviceability. Each enclosure is two base high. Your next step is to cable the system. If your system has expansion enclosures, connect the enclosures together using the SAS cables. Note that the blue tag should be facing down when the SAS cables are connected. Some of the expansion enclosures will need to be connected to SAS port 3 of the node canisters and some of them to SAS port 4. Connect the Ethernet cables. Connect Ethernet port 1 on each node canister to the same Ethernet switch to enable management. Port 1 cables are required and must connect to the same switch. Port 2 cables are optional. 
Finally, you will need to connect the fiber channel cables. The StoreWise V5000 system has either a fiber channel 4 port host interface card or an iSCSI FCOE 2 port host interface card that is pre installed. In our example, we show a system that has a fiber channel 4 port host interface card installed. Connect the fiber channel cables to a fiber channel switch. Each pair of corresponding numbered ports must connect to the same switch. Your final step is to power on the control and expansion enclosures. Each enclosure has two power supplies. Note that the power supplies do not have power switches. So as soon as the main system power cord is connected to a power source, the enclosures start up. Once the system is powered on, check the LEDs on each canister in the system. Each expansion canister is ready with no critical errors when power is on, status is on, and fault is off. Each node canister is ready for initialization with no critical errors when power is on, status is blinking, and fault is off. It may take up to 10 minutes for the node canister status LEDs to start blinking. For detailed information about system installation and initialization, see the IBM StoreWise V5000 Quick Installation Guide. For additional videos about StoreWise V5000 setup and management, see the learning and tutorial topics in the IBM StoreWise V5000 Information Center.